Can you believe it? We're back in the bedroom. This is the master bedroom of our home. We're renovating it and today we're finally ready for insulation on the ceiling. So we have a unique bedroom in that we created a cathedral ceiling. That means that we have to insulate the roof of our house. We don't have much room to work in. I looked at all my options and I'm going to be doing something a little bit unique and I hope to take you guys along and hopefully show you something new. We're going to be using mineral wool insulation. Really, I enjoy working with that. It's a good insulation, has a lot of great qualities. And we're going to be just putting it in right against the roof deck. No roof baffles, no air baffles, no air gap. Let me talk about that more in a minute. All right, guys, I had to take a short break. It is very hot in here. Well, it's actually not that hot at all. It's hot in here. This suit does not breathe whatsoever. I am drenched. I just feel wet. I don't just have sweat on me. I don't want to open it. I am soaked. So, took a break, got some water. You gotta keep hydrated. I'm gonna keep working. It's coming along. We actually got a lot done. That's the one side and you saw the other. So, I'll bring some more bundles in and keep going.
So there it is guys, the roof is all done in the bedroom. It's looking so good, but I'll tell you what, that was a lot of work. But it's not done yet, we still have to do all of this in the entryway, which isn't too bad, but still quite a bit to do. And the bathroom, so just above the bathroom here. It's just basically a six foot span, not too much to do. If I could do all of this in one day, we should be able to easily do the rest of that pretty quickly. Now we'll try to answer your questions. Probably the first question you want to know is, why are we using three and a half inch bats of insulation instead of full size insulation? Well, what happened was we have been looking for insulation to fit our two by eight ceilings. So they're about seven inches deep. We've been looking for a mineral wool insulation to fit that depth for months. Probably like eight months yeah. at least. And we've had no luck, out of stock for nearly a year now. And we were just so tired of waiting, we want to get our bedroom moving. Now our goal was mineral wool, and we had to reach an R30 in that roof. After looking around, we finally found the solution, which was three and a half inch bats made for a two by four wall. They're R15, and by doubling them up, we get our R30, and it's seven inches deep. It's perfect. So the only reason we're using the thinner bats and doing double layer is because that's, that's all, all we could find. Right. It was just necessity and that's what's available. In the end though, I will tell you that that was the best solution because it was a lot easier to work with, I think, than thick bats would have been. Especially getting it around the bracing in the roof, you know, just cut to go around the beams and the tight places. Mm -hmm. It was easier working with smaller bats and double layering it. And I also like the fact that I was able to stagger the joints and that helps block any kind of air drafts yeah. that could happen. So it actually worked out to our benefit. This is a new brand that we haven't used before. We've used mineral wool insulation, but always rock wool brand. Sometimes it was rock sole. Yeah. This one is made by Thermafiber. Corn. Owens Corning, something yeah. like that. The Pink Panther brand. They make a mineral wool insulation, and I will tell you, it was actually a lot nicer to work with than the rock wool, and I love rock wool. Uh, they're both great products, but this one, it seemed to be uh, easier to cut. It was smoother and denser and just more clean. So I really enjoyed working with it. Now, the biggest question is, why are we putting it up against the roof deck without an air gap? I know we're gonna be yelled at, and even answering the question here at the end, there'll be many of you who probably never make it this far and still type the question. Yeah. So I'm gonna do my best to explain this. So what we're doing is going against everything that a lot of you guys know, and that is that you always need an air gap between the insulation and the roof. I used to think that too, but I've done a lot of research on this topic. What I've discovered is that you don't need an air gap between the insulation and the roof if you follow certain rules. There are options available, including air impermeable insulations, such as foam board or spray foam insulation. Obviously they don't require air, air gaps, but what we're doing is actually kind of a new technology in the building science world. And we will be installing a vapor diffusion port. We're not gonna get to it in this video, so I'm not gonna be able to show it to you, but be patient and we'll get to it and it'll make sense. Here's how it works. Basically, you have to follow a certain set of rules. One of them is that the insulation has to be air permeable, which means air can pass through it, which is mineral wool, fiberglass, th those types of insulations. And the air permeable insulation has to be against the roof deck. So they don't want you to have an air gap at all. So we put the insulation against the roof. Since there's no air gap, and since you don't have an air current going through there, you're not having a lot of that moisture laden air be pulled through your roof to begin with. Now you will have some just natural humidity and moisture in the insulation just from na nature, you know. So you have to get rid of that excess 
moisture somehow and that's where the vapor diffusion port comes in and it's exactly like a vented ridge cap where at the ridge of your roof you have slits cut on both sides so that your roof can breathe but instead of leaving them open so that air can pass you air seal them with a vapor permeable membrane house wrap so basically over the ridge we're going to be putting house wrap and sealing it so that air can't move but vapor can escape. It can, it can breathe, it can dry to the outside without air movement. It's a little bit confusing, but this technology has been proven effective. And I'm really excited to try it out because it's been newly adopted into the code. It's something that's available to us. And I love trying new technologies and seeing what works and how it works. So this is the route we're going for. It is a vapor diffusion port and it requires the insulation be against the roof deck. Now there is one little thing, is that it's only allowed in zones one, two, and three, and we're in zone two, so it's only a southern thing right now. It might get adopted into other climate zones, but for now they're only allowing it in the south. The reason we went with this instead of a vented roof like you traditionally see is because vented roofs waste insulation space. If we have an eight inch it's actually seven and a quarter inch roof, and you have to have an inch, inch and a half of air gap, that's that much less insulation you have in your roof. And we wanted to get to that R30. The only way to do it would to be to pack that bay with the mineral wool. So that's what we did. Or build out the ceiling joists more. Build them out thicker and thicker, yeah. So that's the quick, but probably still too long explanation of the vapor diffusion port and why we're putting our insulation against the roof. Basically, wait until we get there. And it probably sounds really confusing, especially if you've never heard of this thing. Yeah. But and that, it's actually pretty simple and we'll show it later. It's a, and the reason we're giving it to you now is just so you can understand what we're doing. And then you guys can always do some research on your own, look it up, it's really neat. Yeah. Neat stuff. I guess the next question is why was I wearing the suit and sweating to death? That was hot working in that room. I just was wiped out by the end. I was totally wiped out. Your whole shirt was drenched. He actually took the shirt when he was done and squeezed it and like sweat was literally like dripping out of it. I was soaked and I was physically exhausted. It didn't look like a hard job but going up and down the attic sweating the whole time for hours doing this installation. It was it was very tedious and it was exhausting, but I pushed through and we got it done. Now, the reason I made myself suffer is because I just didn't want my clothes getting the fibers on it. Mineral wool insulation is very fibrous and the fibers stick to your clothes and they do make me itchy. I don't like the itch, but more importantly, I hate when I'm covered in it and then I have to throw my clothes in the laundry and I don't want to contaminate everybody's clothes. I don't want Maverick and Belle and Ashley to have itchy fibers embedded into their clothing. And honestly, I just don't trust our modern washing machine to do a good job at washing it out. Yeah. You know, new washing machines don't wash as well as they could. Because they barely use any water. Because so, of regulations. So I said to myself, I'm going to play it safe. I'm putting the Tyvek suit on. And it did work. Kept my clothes clean. I was fresh. I had no itches. I was fine. I was just hot and sweaty. My helmet, you guys have seen that. That's my PAPR. It's a powered respirator. And it works awesome. Keeps me breathing easily and not inhaling all that dust. And that's it. I just like to be safe when I'm working. If I was doing a little job with just a couple of pieces, I wouldn't bother. Yeah. But doing a whole ceiling above my head, I just want to be safe. Yeah. So I think that covers the main big questions that we can think of. We always like answering questions just because we know they'll come up. And sometimes it's hard to get to everybody's questions in the comments. So we try to tackle them before... before... We get the questions. Yeah, so I guess that's all I can think of. We're just happy to get the installation done. And we got that little bit to go that I showed you, but that's for another day, that's fine. And we're making big progress and it feels so good, like I said, to be back in the bedroom working again and yeah, making progress. Yeah, I love that. We're gonna be in there soon, we're pushing. We have a deadline, I'm not gonna say it because I don't know if I'll make it, but we're trying. Now our next step, 
after the insulation is done, is starting to put the wood on the walls. Yeah. <laughs> Making the wood, putting it up. We're getting there. That's when stuff starts to really come together. Yeah. So stay tuned. We appreciate you guys coming along. We'll be back soon with another video. And until next time, take care. Bye. Just in time. You said bye. What? You said bye. <gasps> See ya. <laughs>